This is the city of Jerusalem, the year 33 AD. It was a hard time for Jewish people of the city. The city is full of Roman soldiers and the Roman governor Pontius Pilate is in charge. Three days ago, Jews and Roman, Roman leaders killed a man they thought was causing trouble. The body of that man has gone missing. Two Roman officers are going to find out what happened. Centurion, it has been reported that a person or persons unknown made forcible entry into a sealed tomb located in this garden at the end of the rear hall. Because the owner of the property is a VIP, we have been ordered to conduct the investigation rather than someone of lesser rank. That's why I want you to assist me. I'm glad to help. I need to get out of the office for a while anyway to go down to the shoe shop. My sandals need to be half sold and, and the shoe shop is right on my way home. By the way, was anything stole from the tomb? Only the body of a Nazarene we executed. He was buried there a couple of days ago. Oh, an excess VI, eh? That's not a major crime. What makes this so important? Nothing, except that the owner of the property is some wealthy merchant from Arimathea. The, and the tomb had been placed under the protection of Rome because the deceased was a local agitator and had a following. Two of our guys were on duty guarding the tomb during the time that the incident took place. It looks like they may have been sleeping on duty. That makes it look real bad, doesn't it? What do our men have to say about it? Not much, seems they aren't sure what happened. That's why we're here at the scene to re-interview them and look for clues. You can drop off your sandals afterwards. Fine with me. Do we have anything to go on? Not really. The lab, bo the lab boys have already been there and gone. We don't have a report of their findings yet. We do know one thing for sure, though. What's that? That corpse didn't just get up and walk away. The first person to be questioned is Martha, a recently freed slave who was in charge of the residence while the owner, Joseph, is away. She is known for her skills at home improvement and does a weekly howdy class at the for the women down at the bazaar. Women should really leave those things so to men. Look, this may be her coming right now. I'm really glad you officer showed up. My name is Martha. That's M-A-R-T-H-A. I'm the one who sent for you. My master Joseph left town yesterday for his family home in Arimathea. He was upset at all the confusion, noise, and crowds of people in town for the crucifixion on Friday, and wanted a little peace and quiet. He left me in charge of the household, as usual. I know he will be furious with me when he finds out what happened. This is the first time we ever had anything like this. Why don't you tell us what happened? Just the facts, ma'am. The master was really upset because he apparently knew the man they executed and wanted the man to have a decent burial. He donated his own burial site for that purpose and convinced the Romans to let him bury the man there. He made sure that the huge stone that covered the entrance was securely sealed in place before he left. Do you know it took three grown men to roll that stone in place and the master was still worried until the two soldiers arrived to guard the tomb? How could anyone have entered the tomb with those soldiers on guard duty? That's what we're here to find out, ma'am. Was anyone else present in the home between the time when the body was buried and the burial was discovered? The gardener Bubbis was here all weekend. He starts work early each morning, long before sunrise. He's the one who noticed that the stone had been rolled away and found the guard asleep. He's just over there inside the greenhouse. You'll have to be patient with him. He's from the southern part of the empire and is not too familiar with our ways. The light is on, but nobody's home, if you know what I mean. Shall I call him? Yes, please. One more question, ma'am. Do you have any idea who might have done this, or why? I have no idea, but you better catch them soon. I don't want to end up on house arrest or having to pay for the damages on my salary. It would be bad for my image. It's just one thing after another around here. Bubbis, Bubbis, come here. The Tribune wants to talk to you. You know, what she said is true. We need to close this one fast. I have boxy tickets to the chariot races this evening, and my wife, Sylvia, will give me what for if I'm late. I seen it. I will really have seen it. You saw what happened? Yeah, I did. I was over there watching the 
flowers. I saw these guys floating down all dressed in white. Can you describe them? They were two young fellows. They looked like angels. They motioned at the guards and they just fell down. I was so scared I couldn't move. What happened then? One angel just flew over and moved that big stone all by itself. Then both of them just sat down by the tube. Just as calm as you please. You're never going to believe what happened then. Go on, but just the facts, please. Okay, but you won't believe me. No more than those two sat down. I, I heard a noise and sounded tune. I wanted to run, but my feet wouldn't move. All at once, a man wearing a shiny white robe walks in out of the tomb, and then Angel kneels down in front of him. That's when I knew I had to get going. I went and told Martha. What happened then? I don't really know. I told Martha, and she saw it for you. I thought that I had to go walk on the other side of the garden. Did anyone else see what happened? I don't think so. Let me cook it for chef. She got here a couple hours before everybody. She's up in the house now. Want me to get off? I'm Cookus. A messenger brought this to the door for you. Oh, good. It's the lab report. I really want to question Cookus. Oh, by the way, just the facts, ma'am. What time did you arrive here? And did you see anything unusual on the way here? When I got here, I did notice the tomb had been opened. I had to walk right by it coming to work. There were two soldiers standing in front of the open tomb talking. They looked like they just woke up and seemed really confused. I thought they might have been drinking. You know how soldiers are. Oh, excuse me, sir. I didn't mean all soldiers. Did you see anything else unusual? Well, on my way here, I passed a woman coming from the direction of the garden. She was crying and looked desperate. She kept saying, they've taken him, they've taken him. She walked right over to me, looked into my eyes and asked, do you know where they've taken him? I tell you, I was scared. She walked away and didn't even wait for an answer. I walked straight here after that. That's all for now. You may go now, but don't leave the premises. Oh, and tell those two soldiers who are guarding the tomb. The Tribune wants to talk to them. Now. The lab guys are puzzled. They can't find a trace of anyone human inside the tomb or around the entry. There's a thin buzz of claws, but it was of no value. They have, they have no idea how the stone would roll back. No footprints. Tool marks or pie marks. No, no cherry tracks either. This investigation is getting creepy. I also learned that while they were investigating the scene, two of the dead guy's followers showed up. A guy named John and another fellow. They looked inside the empty tomb. When they saw nothing but empty linen, they left really fast. I think it's time to talk to the guards. duty when this incident happened? Yes, sir. What are your names? My name is Frickus. And my name is Fracus. Frickus and Fracus? <laughs> Sounds like a vaudeville act. All right, soldiers, what happened? Just the facts. I'm not sure, sir. I haven't got it straight in my mind yet. Not sure at all. We were standing guard duty at the tomb as we were ordered, when all of a sudden this strange light, this strange bright light was above us. It was real bright, and sir, I swear I saw an angel coming down. That's right, we were, we were frightened because we heard 
the man the the man in the tomb was some kind of a wizard and might cast a spell on us. The angel waved his arm and we both just passed out. Passed right out. We were just we just started to wake up when this crazy looking guy wearing a toga and a baseball cap came running towards us shouting, I seen him! The stone ceiling, the, the tomb being rolled away and the tomb was empty except for some burial wrapping. We didn't know what to do. I know it sounds crazy, sir, but I think it was some kind of magic. You had better have some magic of your own or the governor hears what happened. You two better get back to the barracks right now. You're relieved from duty. And see the psychiatrist when you get there. you but while you're talking to the others this message came to the courier he asked me to deliver it to you it seems that there are reported sightings of the supposed dead man coming in from a number of sources and his followers are telling everyone that if they would be believe in him and be baptized they too will have eternal life if we didn't know it was impossible it would almost seem that this guy had really risen from the dead and was walking around the countryside what will we put in our report I don't know about you, but I'm not about to tell Governor Pyle that some agitator to be executed and sealed in a tomb with two armed guards outside could suddenly come back to life after three days and start strutting around Jerusalem as he owns the place. Me neither. Let's just say his followers sneaked in during the night or found their guards overcoming their heroic resistance and stole the body. The guards might then suffer from loss of memory caused by injuries received in the struggle. That way, our guys are in the clear and is saying nothing about the superstitious rumors of resurrecting the dead. Sounds good to me. Case closed. Let's go get a drink, stop by the shoe shop, and then report to Pilot. Sounds good. A person may hear the facts only and still not know what happened. Others, too many to count have had doubts. It is only through faith in the Lord that we know. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. <laughs>